When you're a small business owner, there's no such thing as nine to five. Days are longer and business hours, they're anything but predictable. Especially when you have finicky clients like ours <laughs> and a staff to support them. My payroll, well, it's complicated. With employees on different commissions, hourly wages, and then there's tips. So when I shop payroll providers for my business, it had to be easy to use and run on my schedule. Short Payroll not only met my needs, but exceeded them. Short Payroll makes running payroll a breeze. And their U.S.-based customer service department is there for me when I have questions, after hours, and even Saturdays, which leaves extra time to spend on these guys. Visit shortpayroll.com for a one-month free trial and find out what makes us different. Because small business is our business. With no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, banking with Capital One is like the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Kind of like choosing Charles Barkley in a pickup game. We'll take Barkley. Ha! First pick! Sorry, kids! Yep, even easier than that. And with our top-rated app, you can bank anytime, anywhere, making Capital One an even easier decision. Okay, here's the plan. Pass me the ball every time. This is banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? New consumer accounts only. Approval required. Term supply. Capital One and a member FDIC. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 361. Tomorrow morning... We will have another dump of documents that were previously sealed per the order signed by Judge Preska. Now, those documents are ordered to be on the docket by no later than 9 a.m. New York time, so Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. tomorrow. That means at 6 a.m., while I'm on the trail, all of these documents will be getting uploaded or put onto the docket. So... When I get home from climbing tomorrow, obviously I'm going to dive into uh, the dumps, give them a quick read, take a look at them, and we will discuss whatever I feel is necessary for us to discuss uh, during the daily drop. So I'll have some time to go over all of it, take a look at it, and see what stuff is relevant to the conversation that we're having here, right? Because, again, I don't suspect that there will be any sort of bombshell information to come out of this. I do expect it to add more context. And, of course, there will be um, some interesting nuggets, right? So I expect all of that for sure. But I'd like to uh, temper down anyone who is thinking that there's going to be like a huge bombshell or something that'll twist the case on its head. I highly doubt it. Now, again, I haven't had access to any of this stuff, so I might be completely off, and we might get something that is a bombshell, but I'm pretty sure that what we're going to be able to get out of this is more context, is more of a guideline to look back to, refer to, and put it as a piece of the puzzle in the larger um, puzzle area, right? Because... Like I always say, there's just so much that goes on with this case. There's so many different layers to this case that it's it's really difficult to keep everything in order, right? You have to really be diligent to keep all of the pieces in order here or else it's like a jumbled mess. It's like your Russell Crowe's character in a beautiful mind staring at a chalkboard, all of the numbers popping up in the equations. That's what this would look like to somebody who was not following this case very closely. And you could tell the people who aren't following the case um, very closely, right? People that write about it, that just have a basic idea or people who talk about it on some of this, uh, these new crop of pop-up podcasts, like I call them. You know, people don't really have a grasp about what they're talking about and they're just trying to hit on the salacious issues and not understanding all of the different levels that are going on here and all of the different levels that this battle is being waged on. And there are so many unseen battlefields still for us to un- un- uncover, right? For a prosecution to uncover and to release. And when I say that, I mean in the, in the realm of finances. You know that if there are forensic accountants diving into this, 
that there are going to be many, many, many instances of not only financial, let us say, irregularities, but out and out money laundering, hiding money, tax evasion, all of that good stuff that they go after mafioso on, all of that good stuff that they use on regular people, well, they'll definitely find all of that stuff with Jeffrey Epstein and his associates, definitely with the ones that were closest to him. Now, with some of the enablers, look, I've been very clear. I think it's definitely going to be an uphill battle to pin anything on them, unless, of course, it's a full court press. And if it's a full court press and Rico is used and they're really looking to send a message, then there's definitely a path to bring some of these people to justice, not for their, say, abuse of girls within Jeffrey Epstein's criminal enterprise, but for their facilitating it with financial transactions and financial dealings. You see, that's why, again, RICO is such an important tool in the toolbox for them to use against people like Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell and people who were in charge of these criminal enterprises. Because before RICO came about, you never got the boss, right? You only got the person who initiated the crime. So you weren't able to charge the whole organization for the crimes of one person. But with RICO, you can charge the whole damn organization, right? And that is what they need to do. That is the path that they need to be on. And it is rather obvious at this point that this is a very large worldwide RICO case that is going to swoop in some of the biggest, most powerful people on the world stage. And that's not hyperbole either. That is just fact from the people that we know about as of now. Ex-presidents, ex-prime ministers, uh, I mean, magnates of finance, banking. These are the real people who run the world, who rule the world. Who do you think gives the money to these politicians to get these jobs, to become president or to become senator? Just watch. Watch how much money pours into Georgia from both sides in this runoff election coming up in January. It's, an, it's a travesty. It's a joke. It's an atrocity. Hundreds of millions of dollars are going to pour in, and bitch-ass Congress and the Senate hasn't even passed some sort of stimulus bill. I know here in Las Vegas, Sisolak just talked, Governor Sisolak just got done speaking, and we're going into a more stringent lockdown, 25% capacity at places, and as I was talking about earlier, it's going to be bad news for our economy. So these people that are getting put into these, play, these, these positions of power, we have to be very thoughtful about who we put into these positions of power because we see the kind of company they keep. We see the sort of people who are donating to their campaigns and we see who is really behind the scenes pulling the strings. And I have news for you folks. The lawmakers are not the puppeteers. Our article today is from the Daily Mail, and the headline is, Ghislaine Maxwell kept an album full of photographs of topless girls, according to Jeffrey Epstein's butler, who said he saw the heiress constantly taking photos in the pedophile's Florida mansion. This article was authored by Caroline Graham. So, oh, excuse me, and Dan Sales and Matthew Wright. Wow, well, they, they did a three-piece on that ass today, huh? They had quite the coordination for this article. It's not that big, but I guess they all contributed, so there's that. Now, we know Ghislaine Maxwell took a shit ton of pictures. We know that they had a bunch of pictures um, on computer hard drives. We know that they had photo albums, and we also know that they were strewn about Jeffrey Epstein's um, many different properties hung as artwork, etc., etc. I wonder how many of them were hung around Slick Willie's painted picture, you know, in the dress with the heels. I wonder how many of them were displayed around his picture. So the article today that we're going to talk about is really nothing new to us who have been following the case. We have heard of John Juan Alessi before. I have talked about him here on the podcast. Uh, I've done a couple of segments on him. 
and we know what his role has been. But, like usual, you know I love context. So, we're going to add this article to the catalog as well, and we're going to see if anything new perhaps pops up, and if not, it is still a good idea to make sure that we're touching base, let us say, with some of the main players on the Epstein stage. Ghislaine Maxwell kept an album full of photographs of topless girls that she had taken, according to court documents. And you know some of the survivors have talked about this as well. The pictures, the way Ghislaine Maxwell would, uh, you know, uh, have them pose, talk up, teach them how to be models, I'm using air quotes right now, etc., etc. So how much more evidence or corroborating um, allegation do you need as an investigator, right? This is child pornography. That's what it is, point blank period. You can't be snapping flicks of little girls. In interviews with lawyers, U.S. pedophile Jeffrey Epstein's ex-housing manager said he saw Maxwell constantly taking photographs of scantily clad girls at the tycoon's Florida mansion. And elsewhere as well, we have reports of it obviously happening on the island, and we saw some of the intimate pictures from the island that were taken of Ghislaine Maxwell in such a loving embrace with Jean-Luc Brunel. So we know pictures were a big part of what these people were up to. They wanted to document it. Jeffrey Epstein was a sick bastard with very disturbing proclivities, and he wanted to have a record of this, sort of like a serial killer who kept idols from their victims. Maxwell, 58, is in a New York jail awaiting trial on multiple counts of procuring girls as young as 14 for Epstein to abuse and allegedly abusing some of the girls herself. She has denied all charges. Well, we know she has denied all charges, right? And we know that she has also been accused of perjury. So in layman's terms, let me just break that down for you. She's been accused of being a liar. So why should we believe anything that this hag has to say? Why should we believe anything that the bipedal serpent is trying to pitch us? I don't believe anything she has to say, and I especially don't believe when she cries and bloviates and and talks about how she's innocent. I'm sorry, but I don't believe that. And for the record, there's nowhere that says I have to believe that. I don't have to be an impartial judge of what's going on here. I'll tell you what, I've, I've seen enough. The evidence, the circumstantial evidence is enough for me. Now it's just putting a bow on it, right? So yeah, I, you know, I don't want to hear anything this this lady has to say. I mean, obviously I want her to have a day her day in court, right? Like every American and every person in the world should be entitled to, but as far as her gaslighting and her crying and whining about her conditions in jail, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I don't care one bit. I have zero empathy for this lady. In papers released by a judge relating to a settled defamation case between Maxwell and Virginia Roberts, who claimed she was coerced into having sex with Prince Andrew, ex-butler John Alessi, 70, claims Maxwell took pictures of young girls as a hobby. And I take a... coerced? I think it was, you know, more of a, you know, a situation where it was definitely coerced, no doubt about it, right? It wasn't like Virginia woke up one day and was like, oh yeah, I think I'm going to go and be passed around to Jeffrey Epstein's scummy buddies. So I think coerced is the proper word there. He said she had an album of full of photographs of people, young girls. Some girls were topless taking the sun. She went out and took pictures in the pool because later I would see them at her desk or at the house and nude 99.9% of the time they were topless. So he's just corroborating what Steve Scully talked about previously and the fact that we know that these girls were running around topless and naked. Were all of them underage? Probably not. He probably, Epstein probably had some girls there of age, 18, 19, 20-ish, 20-ish range, maybe even a little older if they looked younger. But that doesn't matter. If he was trafficking these girls, if they were being coerced and they were being passed around to his friends as party gifts, well, I don't really care about their age. 
All of these people that were involved are scumbags, obviously. The lowest brow crime of all is abusing children. But do, uh, trafficking women is not uh, too many steps above the, 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 uh, on, the, on the ladder there of scumbaggery, folks, all right? Epstein killed himself in jail, allegedly, after being arrested on sex charges. Maxwell insisted she only took benign photographs. And again, let's get all of the evidence. Where are these computers? Why did the FBI let these people have access to these computers after a subpoena was dropped? Why was Zorro Ranch not raided? What secrets does Zorro Ranch hold? What was taken out by uh, uh, Khan? There are so many questions here, folks, and so little answers. The FBI wants to interview Prince Andrew. He has denied all claims of wrongdoing. The Duke of York, Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, 60, was branded outrageous Friday by the lawyer representing six victims of the dead, disgraced financier, pedophile, who killed himself, allegedly, in prison last year. Lisa Bloom, oh, good old Lisa Bloom, huh? She is an outright tool. She is doing more harm to this case than good gaslighting, acting like she's really involved. Give me a break already. More of a maneuver to try and build her own profile, to try and get her name out there a little bit more. She just leaves a really bad taste in my mouth. I have zero respect for Lisa Bloom. Called on the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family to submit to an interview with the FBI as they investigated Maxwell. And she, look, she's trying to get some shine here as well. What are you even involved with Prince Andrew for? What are you even talking about, Lisa Bloom? You're not representing Virginia? Kick rocks already. Quit trying to low-key get some fame here, all right? We all know you for who you are, Harvey Weinstein protector. She said, how outrageous that it's been a year since Prince Andrew the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, publicly promised to cooperate with law enforcement investigating all those who enabled Jeffrey Epstein's sexual assaults on hundreds of women and girls. He simply has not kept that promise. Meanwhile, the six victims I represent struggle to repair their lives. Victims, she calls her own clients victims. No, they were victims when they were being assaulted by Jeffrey Epstein and when that was occurring, but now they're survivors. They lived through it and they've battled, and they're fighting back. So why don't you at least call your clients what they are? The correct terminology, Lisa Bloom. We implore the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family to submit to an interview with the FBI investigation of Ghislaine Maxwell and other accused co-conspirators to tell what he knows, to turn over documents and evidence, and to instruct his staff to do so as well. So, Lisa Bloom is, again, in my opinion, out here just, you know, trying to get involved, get into the fray. She's not Bradley Edwards or um, or uh, Sigrid McCauley or Cassell or Scarola or any of these lawyers that have been on the front lines of this for a very long time battling tooth and nail for these survivors. Lisa Bloom certainly strikes me as somebody who's swooping in like a vulture because she sees some fame and perhaps a few bucks to be had. So I always cringe when I have to read anything that quotes Lisa Bloom. And if you notice, I usually just skip articles that have anything to do with her or her disgusting mother, Gloria Allred. And I'll continue to keep up that pattern and that trend here because I really don't have any desire to listen to what Lisa Bloom has to say in any capacity. So tomorrow, like I said, I will dive into the um, released documents as soon as I get home from climbing in the mountains. And for the daily drop, I will do a uh, uh, the, an episode about what we have found out. So all of the... Um, Stuff that has come before, all of those documents that have come before, that is just, again, it's going to add more context and it puts more pages together in the book, right? So expect there to be some more of that tomorrow. Not too many bombshells, in my opinion. And expect there to be, at at the very least, expect there to be a little more context, at least in certain areas. 
So we'll get on that tomorrow. And um, tomorrow morning, obviously, we'll have our morning update. And we will be rocking and rolling and moving along with the week and seeing just exactly what the hell comes at us because it's starting to get down to crunch time, right? December's going to be here soon. We got December 3rd for the... Uh, the uh, 11th Circuit Court of Appeals hearing, and things are going to start moving rapidly very soon. So we're going to try our best to keep on top of everything, and we will do whatever it is within our power to make sure that we stay on top of all of this news that is coming out on a daily basis. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. And to all of you who have donated to the podcast, thank you very much. All right, folks, I'll be back uh, tomorrow and we will pick back up where we left off. Have a great night, everyone. At I Bailey, we're in business because you are in business. Our trusted team of CPAs and business advisors starts each day focused on one thing, you. I Bailey, what inspires you inspires us. Progressive Motorcycle presents Road Wisdom from the Motor. The road is everything you want it to be. Everything. As long as what you want is road. To ride your motorcycle on. Progressive Motorcycle also presents basic policies starting at $79 a year. Progressive Motorcycle for those who were born to ride. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates annual premium for basic liability policy is not available in all states.